Okay, so... I don't know if you remember, I said it more or less at the beginning. When we set this out, this is really a home assistant, which is designed really at a smart home, smart house, right? So, it's one of its primary functions is really integration, integration of things like sockets and switches and TVs and stuff like that. Okay, so for us, we're using it predominantly for everything to run our micro power plant. Okay, so we want also, we want some kind of control. We want load shedding or we want excess energy. These are just very, very big contactors to pull stuff on and up. But we want it automated. We don't want to be a man there running out in the middle of the garden at night because we've made too much wind, um, turning on a bunch of heaters and, and, and uh, electric water and stuff like that. It's unnecessary. It is stressful, unnecessary. You find that you're not going to have a holiday because you've got to stay here and watch the farm. <clears throat> okay, right. Let's get past all of that and just deal with what we want to do. We want to have all this stuff automated. Let's just automate the living hell out of everything. So we have things like uh, lighting, kitchen lighting, uh, even electric blanket. Who doesn't want the bed warmed? Just so. So what you want to do is the more and more that you then get, so you've got smart switches, you have smart switches, you go and set using your smart switch um, and write your statement. Tell it to turn on at a certain time, tell it to turn off at a certain time based on the conditions on also how much battery you've got left. You can start to do all those kind of things. It is how you can integrate everything so at the end it becomes useful. So even with things like the smart switches, okay, so look for the branding Sonoff, S-O-N-O-F-F. -F. Sonoff can be integrated without any issues whatsoever, okay. And there's a load of other stuff you can put in there. You can put in the currents, the power, the voltage, right. I don't need any of this because the lighting that we're running is LED lighting. It, it has next to no amperage so the wattage is almost irrelevant however what's not to say you don't want to use this and connect it I probably wouldn't go as far as uh, an immersion heater um, your amperage would be way too much for a smart socket but you might want to use it for, for other stuff uh, either to monitor you could use it to monitor only you want to know how much your toaster and your dishwasher or whatever is going to use so plug it straight into the socket or you want to use it to turn a device on and off uh, lighting indoor lighting outside lighting uh, i don't know use your imagination okay so that's where you end up with things like sockets now every type of integration you have to create it's um it has a sensor and the sensor is an, an integration basically is what it is so it realistically doesn't know any difference. One line is one integration. Volts is an integration uh, entity. Um, the TV would be considered also uh, a device, but inside the TV it might have channels, it might have buttons, it might have time. These are all entities. So the more you create, uh, the more information you're being fed back. And sometimes it gets to the point you don't need all that information. So. As we said, let's look at the wind turbine. So for the wind turbine, we use a program called ESP Home. Now that in itself is gonna need a whole video of the hardware that's needed. But at the moment, we'll just deal with the software and we'll deal with stuff like, I have SMA Sunny Island, I have SMA Sunny Boys, and I have smart switches, and I run a small network. Okay, let's just go with that first before we go too in depth because it will go on forever. So if you have SMA equipment and you have smart switches and you want the two to be connected, right, home assistant, easiest to do, lots of room for growth, really, because you're going to go eventually, I want to add this, I want to add that. Okay, okay, so do it small steps at a time. SMA, smart switches, both of which they produce their own app, right, to add. So one is SMA Solar, 
and uh, the other one is there. Now, there is loads and loads and loads and loads of other stuff to integrate. Um, and this gives you the list straight out of the box. You don't need to hack or, or jailbreak or any of that kind of stuff. So um, let's have a look. So you've got things like forecast solar that will work out what is your expected solar in your area. And I'm just looking at uh, really green energy kind of things at the moment. Uh, there you go, grow watts, um, hive. Uh, let's see if I can find some other brands. list is endless. Uh, you can have the Met Office, that would have been helpful yesterday. Um, I wonder who we have. Where is... Where's Goodweed? Let's see if Goodweed's on here. I know there is one for... Ah, there we go, Goodweed. Okay, so Goodweed's on there. Uh, what else is on here? Uh, SMA, obviously. It's SMAs. Um, solar Edge inverters. A lot of people use Solar Edge and Solar Axe. Um, right. So, I mean, rather than going through what have they got, what haven't they got, it's there. Okay. Uh, Tesla Wall. There you go. You've got Teslas. Um, frankly, yeah. I mean, you got Teslas, uh, yeah, you truly got the cream of the cream, I mean, it's price-based. Anyway, okay, so what I'm trying to say is you can integrate anything. What you want is a platform that you can build on, is what I'm trying to say. Once you've got your SMA, you've got your integration, you want to know how can I then build with it, okay? You, during the summer, you will make, I would say, at least... 80% more energy than you're going to need, not not anything else. So what you're gonna do with all that energy, because um, all it's gonna happen is your equipment will just ramp down, okay? So this this is the how. I'm sure in all reality as well, these uh, home assistant can also work with Victron. Okay, so it could even be you have a mix and match of different brands on here. You can have some Goodweed, some SMA, some uh, Tesla, some, you would be able to feed all that data back into one central place, okay? So let's go back to this wind turbine bit and ESP home. So ESP is a cheap little chip, basically, that you can buy and then you program it to read or write data with regards to the other parts of the data harvesting, which is then the piece fair um, equipment, okay? So you want to know the voltage, you've got that, you want to know this, you've got that, you, you've got everything that you, you want and need. You can integrate whatever you want. It doesn't know, nor does it care, the difference between a DC, AC, this, that, and the other, okay? And again, it's very, very um, simplistic. It, it's not plug and play, but there is a lot of help, okay? It's one of the best ways I can explain it, all right? 